sometimes we don't know how far we can go until we hit rock bottom. And if you're looking for some inspiration to keep going as we wrap up one ear and start another, today's episode is the one that will remind you, you got this. Hi, I'm Monica Kang, founder and CEO of Innovators Box, and you're listening to Curious Monica. The past two years have been a reminder about the importance of health and resilience as we face new challenges, new restraints, and new variants. I think of how daunting things felt in March 2020, when I was always concerned about my health and the health of others. But I had to push through, especially because the pandemic changed the way I had to look at my work forever. I realized I could no longer run our in-person workshops and that my entire company model was going to have to get flipped on its head. Fast forward to now, as we reach the end of December 2021, I'm here with you with not only going fully virtual, but also able to expand our capabilities into creative production like music, video, animation, storytelling, and this podcast. The pandemic gave us all a taste of what it's like when health challenges derail our business models and careers. Some people have already had to overcome health challenges in order to succeed. And for the guest on this podcast today, They were able to transform their pain into inspiration for their lives and career changes. Being able to overcome challenges, especially health challenges, takes an incredible amount of resilience. And it takes creativity to be able to apply the lessons we've learned from these challenges into our careers. And I remember that the doctor said, well, I'm really sorry, you will have to take a break from your fancy and, and, you know, nonstop job because You need to go to physical therapy and you won't be able to walk for at least six to 12 months. And I was like, huh? What? Sorry, excuse me again. I know part of my gift is getting someone to believe in this could happen for them. If if you have a defeatist attitude, by the time you get through talking to me, you're going to be ready to go. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce you to two friends who not only made their darkest moments in life a pivotal moment to find something new, but also to enter into new fields. As many of us are asking how we could find more meaning and purpose in the work we do, I hope the stories of these two friends inspire you and empower you in your journey. And yes, it's okay that it takes time. It wasn't overnight for them either. And honestly, Some of their moments were downright scary, both emotionally and physically. As humans, we all have so much resilience and grit, but those characteristics have to be earned. Tough moments remind us of what we have within us. Resilience, courage, curiosity, creativity, and persistence. And one way we could tap into these hidden perspectives is by seeing how others have done it too. Meet D. Anthony Evans. I'm most notably known for my surviving 385 tumor excision and having, you know, six months to live 10 years ago, and we're celebrating our 10th year. But, Monica, thank you for having me. Um, I'm just excited. Not nervous, but very excited and anxious to get into it because I know that my journey is not for me. My existence is for everybody else just as a tangible example of what we can do. He is an international plant-based lifestyle coach who helps people with major health issues to fight the odds and learn to thrive. And he does it well because he learned how to do it for himself. Ten years ago, the doctors told him there was no hope. He had terminal cancer called MPNST a rare condition where tumors grow on nerves and the survival rate is low. The first sign of this disease was when he discovered a tumor on his knee when he was 15 years old. This tumor forced him to let go of his dream of wanting to be an NBA athlete. His single mom was devoted to ensuring he got the support he needed. He participated in a study at the University of Chicago that resulted him in receiving a new surgery. There was a sign of hope. But when he was 16, 
his mom passed away due to HIV. So at age 16, D. Anthony not only had cancer to fight, but was now without a mother. This led him to some pretty dark moments. He wasn't sure if there was really a way out of this. My story is a little rocky and turbulent in the beginning. From high school, I was an honor student that lost his mother the second week of junior year which in turn led to me dropping out, got recruited by a street gang. This was on a downward spiral because she was everything. She was my mother. She was my father. She was the reason I was getting up every morning. And I lost her and I just gave up on life. So I did it, made sure I did everything that she didn't want me to do. In several turbulent years, I say about six of them, I would use alcohol and drugs to grieve instead of going to get therapy and help because as a young African-American man in Chicago, you're taught to be tough and you don't cry, you don't ask for help, you suck it up. And you know, the drugs and alcohol worked for about five years until I woke up on my birthday, you know, on the fifth floor from trying to take my life. And then from that, I learned how to grieve I got out of there. I started a marketing company called Global 360 Marketing and Promotions. Began to broker airtime for Clear Channel and CBS. But I've always been like an entrepreneur. I want to acknowledge D. Anthony's open humility in acknowledging where he was yesterday to be where he is today. When we see the shiny accomplishments of someone today, we forget to reflect on how much courage and work it took for them to get there. We forget to consider the hardships that those have faced. As D. Anthony's drive for new life grew, so did the grim news of his health. Doctor after doctor made it clear that there was no hope. What do you do when you hear that? D. Anthony decided to not give up. After my doctor and every doctor in the world had basically told me to you know, say goodbye, and I'd probably be gone by June of 2012. And then I got to January of 2013 and then 2014. I said, man. And yes, he is still healthy and well in 2021 and 2022. What helped him? Many things. Plant-based health, exercise, but most importantly, his mindset and drive. When you speak with him, he will be eager to share why your motivation, drive, and mindset are key to your mental and physical well-being. For D. Anthony, Buddhism became an important practice, and he shares how it's so key to reframe how we think about tomorrow and today. Instead of stressing about what we don't have and what we haven't reached, focus on gratitude and manifest the possibilities you want. Yes, an abundance mindset. I asked DeAnthony why this framing of abundance, gratitude, and possibilities is important for him, even in the face of changes and uncertainty. It's a gratitude thing, actually. And when you're really living in gratitude, and that's hard to do when we take life for granted. And a lot of us, you know, we, we think we're going to wake up tomorrow. But there's something about what happened to me that has me in a state where service before self is the only thing that matters because I've studied so much. And I know you only manifest blessings for the things that you do that you don't expect anything in return for. Or the things that you do when nobody is looking. When you do the stuff and put it on Instagram, that doesn't count. Like, I, I, I try to explain that. But I do what I do for others because somebody did it for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's real simple. I was in a very dark part of my life and someone reached back for me. That's why if they invite me to speak at the county jail, I'm going to go speak to the inmates because it was a time in my life I should have been under the... I've never killed anybody, but I sure was living that street life to the best of my ability, like an idiot. And I've also spoken in Congress several times. Dick Durbin, Tammy Duckworth. I was the congressional district lead for the American Cancer Society. I was one of their lobbyists. I mean, who has a story like mine? I get bills passed. Like, there's a couple bills, the palliative care bill and the senior relief bill. Both of those bills, are. I had them crying. 
And then we have the camera right there so we can assume that you're going to support this, right? And they'll be like, yeah, hey, it's the best, hey, it's the best guilt lobbying in the world. Hey, it's very effective. A lot of people are benefiting right now because I made some senators and some congressmen cry. And I can't worry about what I'm going through. Like, I have MPNST. That's malignant peripheral neurological sheath tumor. That is a rare sarcoma. That is bone cancer. It is high grade. There is nobody in the history of man who has put 10 years together that does 200 pull-ups every day. He just doesn't, he's not here. He doesn't exist. And it's not because I'm special. It's because I listened. It's because I listened against everybody else. They, he's just a chef and a monk. And blah, 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 blah. I say, listen, my heart is telling me I need to listen to him. I lost a lot of people in the beginning. They're like, why are you not listening to your doctor? Because he's trying to plan my exit and out of the world. Like, I mean, I'm not ready to go. And, and so I know part of my gift is getting someone to believe in this could happen for them. Don't do it for the gram. Do it for the people behind the scenes. What a reminder we needed, especially in this day and age where so much of our success and milestones are counted upon how many likes or attention we got online. D. Anthony's humility and nuance are so key in his journey of how he transformed his most difficult moments into transforming other people's lives. Show up with gratitude. Don't take your life for granted. Listen. Speaking of listening, Michelle DeMatteau, motivational speaker and life coach, shares why listening to your body is key. At times, in our drive to want to do more, we ignore what our body is asking for. Rest, recharge, and at times a holistic lens. Though work was busy and hectic, Michelle DeMatteau loved fashion and her work in New York City until her body suddenly shook her to say enough is enough. So when I turned 23, I finally had my second hitting rock bottom moment. And that was when I got to that point where my body was actually talking to me. I battled against anorexia for seven years. And it was in that moment where my body really had like its last, let's say, moment of saying like, we can't keep doing this. There was a dis disconnection of my emotions, my physical body, and obviously where I was at that point in my life. And that was one of my, let's say, big awakening moments. And time passed, and somehow I ended up with a fracture, and I broke everything that you can possibly think of, tibia, peroné, ankle, everything. The dog, I was in Costa Rica. It was for a Christmas. It was, yeah, it was Christmas or New Year, something like that. And I remember that the doctor said, well, I'm really sorry. You will have to take a break from your fancy and, and you know, nonstop job because you need to go to physical therapy and you won't be able to walk for at least six to 12 months. And I was like, huh? What? Sorry, excuse me again. Six to 12 months of not being able to walk. I'd have to say the same reaction as Michelle. So what do you do when you hit rock bottom? You get curious about how you build a new narrative from here. I need to go back to the city and I need to keep, you know, giving like this super fast, exciting life that I had. And there I was with my leg, you know, and all those pins and all that pain. And I started going to physical therapy and I decided to go to a place that it's a, a very good clinic because they treat athletes they treat adults like myself or people that are in their last stage let's say uh, health-wise and it was a huge aha moment because every day that I went I started meeting friends new friends or other patients right people that were getting better people that were just the same and people that were not healing actually were let's say going backwards with their health and when I was there, there was a big wake-up call for me that I said, you know, I work so much to help people feel good from the outside. But there is no point of having an outside if you can't really have peace and beauty inside. 
And that's the moment where I said, like, you know what, even if I work in fashion, I need to work on the tone and the intention that I have behind everything that I do as a designer. And that was one of the, let's say, first steps that I had in this transition, career transition. This is such a powerful reminder. So much of our professional lives, we focus on how things are on the outside that we don't give enough time to invest in the inside. How are we really feeling? How are we really growing? As Michelle focused on healing her leg, she was reminded how important it is to lead with your heart and thoughtfulness in everything you do. This letter to not only do fashion with purpose, but expand into other fields with a purpose, like coaching consulting, and the coffee business. Because of her multifaceted insights, she also serves as an advisor to many Olympic athletes, Grammy Award singers, songwriters, presidents, and first ladies. She has been recognized as the top 100 most distinguished businesswoman in Central America in 2019 and goes out of her way to empower many in every industry to live their full potential. While none of this is overnight, she reminds us how we have to take the first step of courage. Don't overcomplicate things. We can always change careers. We can always start from scratch. I guess that a lot of people uh, with the pandemic notice that sometimes it's not that complicated to start from scratch. I mean, I have started from scratch many times. It's not fun. And you have a lot of uh, challenges in front of you and you're like, oh my God, how do I start this, this again? But there is always a way. If we're alive, there is always a way. So the only thing that we have to really take care of is that time and also our bodies because that will never come back. Health is something really, really precious. Prioritize your health physically, mentally, and more. What are ways we could take better care of ourselves? Michelle, what are some ways you like to take care of yourself? Michelle has much to share on this, and I hope you are ready to take down some notes. Movement is also very good, but I would say, why do you want to be so busy? Ask the uncomfortable questions. What am I really trying to run away from? For example, with the story that I shared from the anorexia and my foot and all the pins and that I couldn't walk, what was terrifying was not that I couldn't work, but what was terrifying was that I had to stay there with myself and deal with the things that I didn't want to look into. Because it's easier, instead of going inside and seeing what hurts and turn it into healing, sometimes it's easier to just Take your phone out and go on Instagram or, you know, uh, go outside or try to distract yourself from what is really happening here and now. So that is also mental and emotional health. Depression during the pandemic, it's getting really, really serious. Why? Because we don't pay enough attention to the way we feel, to what is happening in our lives. Sometimes we just let life happen without really asking ourselves, how do I feel? Do I love? Do I respect myself? Do I honor myself? So when we breathe, going back to the techniques of breathing, that is very important. It's like when you breathe, you connect with yourself. It's like you say, hi, Michelle. Hi, Monica. How are you today? I want to check in with you. What am I going to do for this person today? Second, the movement. A lot of things can be expressed with our voice. Sometimes we're not even aware, but the body has the memory. We have to learn how to, let's say, let go of all this rigid stress and connect with that playfulness that we had as kids. Eating mindfully. Sometimes we eat without even paying too much attention to what it is that we're eating or we skip meals. It's important to really observe why we eat what we eat. Am I really just fulfilling a need or do I want to nourish my body? That is also self-care. That is also linked to productivity. There are, there are a lot of studies that will back up with what I'm saying. There are a lot of things that we can eat that will improve our productivity, but also will improve, like let's say, our immune system. 
so many gem insights and such a timely reminder as we wrap up 2021 and embark on the new year soon. How are you taking care of yourself and why are you doing what you are doing? I admit as well, this year, I had to fight more insomnia and anxiety than previous years and I had to learn how to listen to my body a lot more. While I'm not fighting jet lag anymore, it dawned on me how much our at-home business can get in the way of listening to why we do what we do. DeAnthony and Michelle are some of the many innovators out there reminding us as a society to wake up more intentionally with gratitude for the life and work we get to do. Don't let those dark moments in life stop you from celebrating and recognizing what is ahead of you. The best is yet to come, but you have to manifest it. Build on it and seek it. Thank you, D. Anthony and Michelle, for taking a moment to join our show to share your story. Please take a moment to learn more about their work and journey on our show notes. This was your host, Monica Kang, founder and CEO of Innovators Box, and you're listening to Curious Monica. Thank you again for joining us. I hope you're enjoying the end of the year holiday season. And as both guests have shared, Build in time to recharge and rest. Join me next week, next year, as we share more stories. Happy end of the year. Oh, and hope you're enjoying our holiday songs from Pause to Wonder. See you soon in 2022. I've often dreamed what a beginning of a new year means as I read a new year in my diary. What do I want to be this year? As I hear the seasons changing everywhere I pause to smile where I am, who I am And who I dream to be Who I dream to be more I want to learn more I want to rest more I want to love more I want to grow more Whether it's known or unknown I know what I know is not all Friends and allies keep reminding me That here is not all But that doesn't mean I'm lost or alone So here I am dreaming of another me I pause to wonder Hello there, I'm Luke Helder, the head composer at Innovators Box. I hope you're enjoying Curious Monica. Did you know that the average person spends a total of 13 years listening to music in their lifetime? I didn't. This show is brought together by our amazing podcast team at Innovators Box Studios. Shout out to our audio engineer, Sam Lermott, Kelly Gravo on marketing, Website designer Akriti Pandey, graphic designer Monica Escobar, Leah Orsini on social media graphics, Sarah Piedraita and Floor on project assistance, and me on music. And of course, this show is hosted and directed by the curious woman herself, Monica Kang, founder and CEO of Innovators Box. To continue the curiosity and creativity of the workplace, visit us at innovatorsbox.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review and share. We would love to hear what you're curious about and what mysteries Monica can uncover in our next episodes. See you next week.